Alrighty, folks, the results for the Bagman movie promo is out. Two weeks ago, I put out a post and asked ask you guys to submit anything that has scared you as a child. Put it in the comment section to stand a chance to win two movie passes to Shaw Theatre to catch Bagman in the cinema or any other movies. Now, initially, we had 10 pairs of movie passes to give out, but because there was like 43 over submissions from you guys, I kind of nudged, nudged, wink, wink and asked Charlotte from Shaw if she could give us a little bit more and they have generously agreed. So today we have 15 pairs of movie passes to give out. I'm going to be reading this 15 winners, their entries. But if you want to listen to the rest of the entries, you can go check out our Patreon. I will be putting up a PDF file for pretty much everyone to read. So enjoy the rest of the submissions that came in from other people. They're all equally good. They're great uh, posts that I really want to select, but we only have 15 pairs to give away. Okay? So now, let's go with our very first winner. This is Ivan Go. He wrote, People might be laughing on this, but do take note. It was a very, very long time ago. Remember when I was very little. I love going to the Pasa Malam or Fun Fair near my home. The bright lights, the smell of grilled satay and the bustling crowds always excited me. One evening, my mom took me there and I think I wandered off for just a moment, drawn by a stall selling colourful toys. I turned back to call for my mom, but she was gone. Panic surged through my little body as I scanned the sea of people. Face blurred and the usual cheerful noise became overwhelming. I ran to where I thought my mom had been, calling out for my mom, but the crowd was thick and my voice was drawn out by the chatter of strangers. Minutes felt like hours as I pushed past adults looking for a familiar face. My heart raced as the fear of being lost forever took hold. Finally, just as tears welled up in my eyes, I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was my mom looking just as worried. We had found each other, but that brief moment of separation stayed with me. For years, I couldn't shake the fear of getting lost in a crowd. SMT Tan, she wrote, I used to live in one of those old pre-World War II SIT flats at Tiong Bahru. When we were kids, my siblings and I saw an apparition of a greenish lady who would sometimes play pranks on us and call us by our names when we are all alone at home. We saw her separately on different occasions, but would corroborate what we had seen. Kelvin Chua As a child, my imagination ran wild, transforming the mundane into realms of terror. The dark corners of my bedroom were a source of endless fright. Shadows would creep across the walls, morphing into sinister shapes that whispered my name. I would lie under my covers, convinced that something lurked just beyond the reach of my nightlight, waiting for a moment I dared to peek out. The tales of monsters that live under the bed or in the closet, biding their time until nightfall. I would often convince myself that I could hear them breathing, waiting for me to fall asleep. The thought of a pair of eyes watching me from the darkness was enough to send shivers down my spine. These fears, though irrational, shaped my childhood, crafting an intricate tapestry of anxiety and wonder. They taught me about courage, resilience, and the power of imagination. Lessons that still linger, reminding me that sometimes the scariest monsters are the ones we create ourselves. Rina Tan. We used to stay in a kampong in the late sixties. <laughs> we used to stay in a kampong in the late sixties to the early seventies. And the toilet is a makeshift standalone cubicle at the far back of the house. My greatest fear is to have stomach ache at night and I would need to use the jamban toilet in Malay. There's no electricity and I had to use a candle to light up the inside of the stall and do my big business. I prayed and prayed that no Miss P, Pontiana, or Pochong will appear or you're scared the shit out of me. Ilin T. When I was young, sometimes when I stayed at my aunt's house, I would always be paranoid and afraid of sleeping alone with a doll lying on the shelf in the room. It gave me the creeps and it felt like it would turn its head to stare at me at any time. Eileen, I know how you feel. I have a doll in my room as well. Sometimes I wonder if it's just staring at me or blinking. Dawn Santa Maria. Some skeleton prop that was used in an episode of Crime Watch long, long ago depicting a murder victim when I was only seven. I freaked out and would squeeze my eyes shut whenever I hear 
the crime watch jingle play on TV. La big tiger, la big tiger teo. Water goes shui kui. Watch one Chinese movie when I was young. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. I know exactly which one you're talking about. It's the Chinese movie with the watermelon that floats in the water and then suddenly sink into the, the sea when they have found the dead body, right? That's the one. Yeah, that particular show scared me as well. 19. Are you Hayati? Knowing the house I lived in was spooked but I had to complete the MOP, the minimum occupancy uh, period. Every night was indeed a nightmare as we would hear sounds of huge chains being dragged from one end of the unit to the master bedroom and invisible hands pulling at my blanket. Ooh, are you? It sounds like you need to come on my show and tell us a full story. Anna Tien, what scared me when I was younger were two figures that appeared at the end of my bed in my dreams. I kept having the same dream for a long time. Just me sleeping while these figures watched over me from the same spot. The male figure would sometimes lay on top of me and slide his big, rough hands up my thigh. And I always wondered why his hand felt so warm. Looking back, I think they stayed in my room because my dog would bark at nothing and refused to come in. It was quite scary. On the day I moved out, I looked up at the window and waved goodbye. That night, I had one last dream, where the couple stood at the end of my bed Accompanied by two childlike figures waving goodbye. Hashtag Jurong East. Hmm. I'm still quite sus about the warm hand going up the thigh bit. Since this is like a family of ghosts. Who's on, who was the one who did that? Hmm. Kwa Hui Min. Even till this age, unexpected knocks on the door make me anxious. Especially with our unit being on a common corridor. I grew up hearing stories about some old auntie selling the snacks. If you don't buy from her, she'll send her barang to you. That is the legend of the, the Nenek Krupo who go from door to door knocking or asking for water or selling Krupo. And if you don't or you treat her badly, she'll curse your house. Eugene Chan. As a kid, my biggest fear was clowns. Everything about them, the eerie smiles, laughter, the big eyes, the colourful outfits and all. One scary encounter was when I was sleeping over at my auntie's place. She had a clown sitting on top of a piano, which I observed kept swinging its leg at night. As I later found out, it's a normal rag doll and it was not supposed to move. Was it my imagination? Turns out there were a few other entries of people who were afraid of dolls as well. And clowns. In Sam Yoja 2, when I was young, I slept in the bedroom where my bed was facing a large mirror. I guess that my parents were not superstitious. I used to go to bed terrified that I will see the reflection of someone sleeping in the bed next to me. Oh, I like this one as well. Chikara Gaming, my family had the Jew on DVD set with the ghost face as the cover and they displayed it so nicely beside the set top box. I always get spooked out by it every night. To a point I once even dreamt I woke up with the boy next to me. <laughs> okay, we have uh, oops, two more. Oh, well, this one, it's uh, this one is probably the most frightening of all. It's by Dan Hart in the middle of the night. Nothing is more frightening than a flying cockroach. What if one day you're trapped in a room with a flying cockroach and yet a scary white figure standing at the exit? This one, Dan Hart, it's no competition. I know exactly where I'll be running towards. And for the last one, we have Havwe Chai. Uh, this one is, I think, quite a... A, a, a common one for many of us who grew up uh, in a Chinese family. I was frightened by the story of the Nian during my childhood. Adults will scare you if you don't sleep at night. During CNY, the man-eating monster will come and find you. That's how parents kind of traumatize us by planting all these fears inside our head. But as it turns out later on in life, when we are adult, they 
they tell you the same thing that if you stay out overnight and you don't sleep on CNY, it's actually better for your family members, for your parents because they'll have a longer life. So do you sleep or do you not sleep? That is our, that's our local folklore and heritage for you. So that's all the 15 winners we have. And if your name was read up, well, please get in touch with me. My number is 9459-4931. I have a pair of movie pass to give away. All right. I'll see you guys on Friday Night Live.